Good afternoon everybody. Today's concert is going to be a celebration of the piano prelude through about 200 years and the progression from J.S. Bach all the way through to Debussy. So it's incorporating a lot of the composers that we've heard along the way of now this ninth week a ninth uh, lockdown concert that we've had. Last week's Beethoven concert was a little bit epic in the sense of trying to cover 32 piano sonatas in the space of a, a one small concert and then playing one of the penultimate, uh, the penultimate piano sonata. So today we're going to do a little bit more of that, but just showing how, rather than Beethoven's sonata evolved through his lifetime, how the piano prelude evolved over time. And I did promise some Baroque composition. And of course, uh, who better to start with than J.S. Bach? Now, Beethoven's piano sonatas have been sort of uh, come to be known as the New Testament of piano playing, the, you know, the 32 sonatas and, and one of those sets of books that you all need to have on your shelves in your music library. Uh, whereas the, the Bach 48 Preludes and Fugues are, are known as the sort of, uh, for, the 48 known as the Old Testament, so the, the start of where all things began. And 48 Preludes and Fugues, why is that? Well, there's 12 keys chromatically on the piano, including all the black notes. And every key has got its own major and its own minor. So C major, C minor, and, and so on. So you, you see where um, that 24 comes from. There are two sets of books Bach wrote. The first set you'll see here um, is um, part one, book one. Uh, that's 24 Preludes and Fugues. And then there's obviously a later set. Now, the first set was written in 1722. And then later set in 1742 in Leipzig. Now, in the title page of that first set, um, let me see if I can read it. It is a there's a quote that Bach wrote for the profit and use of musical youth, desirous of learning, and especially for the pastime of those already skilled in this study. So really, he's wanting to have um, a piece in every key. And as we saw perhaps in the Jane Austen concert, if you saw the Jane Austen concert, the amateur pianists would like to keep their uh, key base a little bit more simple with ones in either one sharp or two sharps or one flat or two, sharp, two flats. Whereas Bach is saying, right, let's stretch this out. Let's play in every key. There's obviously an issue to do with tuning and lots of lots of uh, commentators have said about, you know, the, with the equal temperament and what that means at this time. Uh, in Bach's day, each of the different keys were tuned slightly differently. And now we have a, a modern tuning where you can play in all different types of keys without having to tweak various keys and black notes sharper and, and flatter. So he really started to put that on the map of actually saying, OK, well, let's play um, in, in one temperament, if you like, in one set, of, uh, one set of tuning so we can play in different keys. So the, the prelude and fugue I'm going to play is in B flat minor, slightly epic uh, five flat prelude and a prelude meaning the, a short composition that introduces another perhaps longer piece and Bach um, coupled these preludes with his fugues so if, if the opening of the prelude it's very very somber in that B flat minor <laughs> What's interesting about the fugue that comes after it, um, it's one of the few that Bach wrote um, in the 48 that's a five part fugue. Um, if you imagine a fugue being something like a round in London's Burning, to simplify it, London's Burning, London's Burning, and then somebody else sings it. And some, if you imagine five sets of London's Burning going on all at the same time, you've got a five set fugue, a five part fugue. Uh, what's interesting, obviously, two hands. 
five different voices so reasonably complicated to get all of the different voices coming through so he's got quite a simple fugue entry that you hear so there's intervals of the fourths and the fifths at the opening and then the scales they become very a real feature in the fugue in that five part fugue so that's the Baroque side of things with preludes. Um, there were some preludes written in the classical period, but I think Bach had pretty much exhausted the form. He said, right, you know, he took it to such a level with his preludes and his fugues that people were in the classical period a little bit um, so wary to go there. Clementi and Kramer wrote some preludes, very, very short four-bar um little little pieces that then accompanied exercises more of a sort of a, a technical side of things but it wasn't until the romantic composers start to put it back on the map and the one i'm going to play by chopin that we mentioned a little bit earlier we had a little bit of a ditty of in one of the earlier concerts um was the raindrop prelude in written in d flat major written in Mallorca in tr what they, with George Sand and Chopin in this what, what would have been a beautiful iconic monastery overlooking sea and mountains and then they had torrential rain which meant it meant both of them were working very hard but Chopin's health deteriorated rather and and he ended up with um, all sorts of complications with TB and as the story goes is that George Sand is going off to get supplies and the the relentless rain is 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 comes through in this A flat that you hear all the way through <laughs> a G sharp and then it goes back to the A flat and it carries on all the way through that composition so it's showing the sort of light and shade if you like of a storm then we get into the realms of Rachmaninoff again and Chopin like Bach explored writing in every key for his preludes lots of other composers did that Alcan, Ligeti, Scriabin to name a few and Rachmaninoff achieved it and the one that we're going to hear his G sharp minor prelude has got echoes from the picture of an exhibition written in 1874 a little bit earlier in time same key and this is the old castle from pictures in an exhibition Rachmaninoff's prelude in the same key we still have that same tenor line that comes through with slightly different accompaniments very much more Rachmaninoff coming out <laughs> And, and, and echoes of the old castle from the pictures in an exhibition. Last piece I'd like to finish with, another prelude, these are all preludes we're doing today, um, and this one, Debussy chose to write the titles of his preludes at the end of the piece. The, you know, there's lots of speculation as to why that was, uh, but I think the, the one that people generally come towards is that the artist the 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 performer gets to know the prelude and then at the end of it you have this sort of description and this one is the submerged cathedral so and out of the out of the sea out of the water you imagine this this cathedral coming higher and higher and you hear these bells all the way through Way 
way through those little bells and then as it really goes for it and the cathedral comes right out of the ocean After it has come out of the ocean, it goes slips back in and subsides away. So lots of different pieces with different stories to tell. Like I said, through the through the ages, 200 years of preludes, but starting off, needless to say, with Bach and his one of his 48, one from the, the 48 preludes and fugues. And this one to start with is the Bach prelude and fugue in B flat minor. And then we have the Chopin prelude in D flat major, the raindrop, the Rachmaninoff prelude in G sharp minor, that's got those echoes of pictures in an exhibition, and the submerged cathedral, La Cathedrale en Glouti, in from Debussy. E interestingly, the uh, submerged cathedral and Rachmaninoff's prelude were both written in 1910. Completely different countries, but same years, so you can really hear how the different composers have taken it, taken the form in a different direction.
Well, a movement from 1722 to 1910 through 200 years of piano preludes um, in, a, in a glimpse, in a glimpse. Next week, um, it's half term for us, but there will be a concert. Uh, well, I've pre-recorded a piano part and my lovely friend Ali is going to pre-record her clarinet part and then my lovely husband Ted is going to put them all together with a video. So what could possibly go wrong? So that's what we're hoping to do for next week. A little bit of horror bits for you uh, to, to liven things up for the half term. Long may the sunshine last. Clearly nobody's going to the beach, so that's all good. But I um, hope you have a fantastic break um, if you're a teacher and a pupil and all of those wonderful things and all these people working so hard to keep everything and keep keep the, the wheels on the bus and they keep the cogs, cogs turning. So lovely to see you all again. Um, I hope that was a, a nice prelude to our half term. And quite how long we'll do the concerts for? Maybe 12 weeks, maybe longer. We'll see as, as and when what happens with all of the schools. But certainly for the, for the immediate couple of weeks, there's going to be more concerts to enjoy. So um, enjoy the sunshine now and lovely to see you all today. Thank you.